Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. For today's video I'm going to be answering some of the questions I receive on my videos about being a chemical engineering student. Obviously I'm a smaller channel so I don't receive hundreds and hundreds of comments all the time but I've had a good bit of them from my chemical engineering student day in the life video I posted last year. I'll put it up right here and also put a link in the description to that if you want to check it out. Um, with that being said, don't forget to subscribe. I just hit a thousand subscribers, which is super awesome, and I'm pretty sure I can get my um, ad revenue back, which would be so awesome so I can put money back into my channel and keep putting up videos. Okay, let's get into the questions. So the first question is from a viewer who asks if studying chemical engineering could lead to a career um, in research or Kind of discovery into the pharmaceutical industry and drugs and designing different methods and processes for that and yes of course um, that was one of the big careers you talk about in um, the intro chemical engineering classes that we have the pharmaceutical industry i'm sure has tons of chemical engineers in it i don't think that that's the route i'm particular particularly going to go into but at school we've got chemies who are pre-med and going to medical school um, they're interested in the pharmaceutical industry, there's food, there's energy, um, you know, power generation, and the oil. There's so many different fields that chemies can go into, and that's definitely one of them. I don't particularly know about it because that is not my particular field that I would like to go into. I would recommend doing research to see the best path to take to get into that industry. Okay, the next one is a couple of questions from the same person. They ask, why did you decide to become a chemical engineering major and is it very rigorous? I honestly don't really remember in detail why I became a chemical engineering major. Um, I know why I got interested in chemistry in the first place. I read an article for this project in um, basic high school chemistry about how chemical engineers had been engineering some kind of system to get water to undeveloped cities um, in third world countries. And I thought that was so awesome. I was like, if that's what chemical engineers can do, I want to be one. And I liked chemistry. And so I was like, okay. And also my mom was like, hey, engineering and chemistry mixed together, try it out. Uh, and I did. And here I am three years later. To answer your question about is it very rigorous? Yes, I guess depending on who you ask, it's generally considered like the harder engineering, um, probably because people are scared of the chemistry aspect of it. If you enjoy it, then it probably wouldn't be as difficult for you. I personally hate physics, so the thought of having to sit through mechanical or like electrical engineering classes sounds horrible to me, but I know I have friends and classmates who think the same thing about chemical engineering. The thought of having to take organic chemistry is like a total nightmare to them, but it hasn't really been too bad for me. So it really just depends on what your interests and skills are. It's different for everybody, but yes, chemical engineering is generally regarded as one of the more difficult fields of study. The next question is from a fellow chemical engineering student asking about how I managed to organize all of my lecture notes and problems, especially with all of the different formulas, equations, and classes that you have to keep up with. So I might be an engineering student, but sometimes the common sense is lacking. I just realized yesterday that my really cool new expensive laptop I had to get to keep up with um, the program requirements for chemical engineering is also a tablet. So pretty soon I'm hoping to tra transition to a more electronic based study. Um, I like to read ahead for every class if possible if I know the schedule that the professor has provided. And if not, then I just take my lecture notes in lecture, study them, and I try to get to homework as soon as possible while that stuff is still fresh in my brain and I can work the problems knowing the concepts and that helps to reinforce the concepts a lot of the time. Um, before I realized that my laptop was uh, could be converted into a tablet, I just take notes on paper and I carry one binder around because I think I mentioned this in my last video, I'm not sure if it's specific to my university or just chemis, 
but the thermo class we take is supposed to be over two semesters, but we do it over one. And so we have it every single day of the week, which is so exhausting. But um, because of that, I don't wanna have to have like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday binder and then a Tuesday, Thursday binder because I need that stuff every day. So I just have a binder divided with each class and in some of my easier classes, um, after we take an exam and get through material, I will take it out of my binder since I won't need to carry it around every single day to prepare for lectures. I can just glance back at it at home if I need to. So that's how I stay organized, a binder with dividers for each class, and then hoping to switch um, electronically. Once I get a hang of that, I will probably make a video about how I take engineering notes electronically. All right, this next one's kind of long, so I'm gonna read it off of here. Um, as a chemical engineering student, do you deal a lot with chemistry labs or is it mostly mostly math and physics related? This person enjoys chemistry but not the lab work, so they're not sure if chemical engineering would be right for me, for them. Um, so yes, you do have to take um, chemistry one, two, and two organic chemistry, at least that's how it's laid out at my school, um, as well as a unit operations lab later on in chemical engineering and there's an organic chemistry lab included with the organic chemistry classes, which I have not taken yet. I'm in Orgo 2, two but I haven't taken the lab class. That'll be next on my agenda. And so yeah, there is a little bit of chemistry lab included. I know it's not my favorite thing ever. It always feels so stressful, but one of my favorite parts of college so far has been going off and doing my co-op in an industrial environment. And obviously I wasn't sitting there with beakers in class with a TA looking over my shoulder, it was on a larger scale and I wasn't so directly responsible for the experiment in front of me, but being in the field was really awesome. So I wouldn't totally discredit um, chemical engineering just because of a couple lab classes you have to take. I would keep your mind open, but I guess if you don't really enjoy it, it might not be for you. And Yes, we do have to take math and physics. We just took physics one and two with calculus. And also we take up to differential equations. We take three calculuses and then diffy Q. Um, again, I'm not sure how other universities lay this out. This is just at mine. So yeah, lots of math, um, but it's not too bad. Here's another couple of questions from the same viewer. They ask, how much do your textbooks and calculator cost you? calculator I used I've actually had since I was a freshman in high school. It's lasted me like eight years. It did die on me in the middle of the ACT in high school, which obviously it turned out okay. I'm in college now. Um, but each semester, my textbooks cost me anywhere from total for all of my classes, probably anywhere from 200 to 400 at the worst. It just depends on the professor, the way they like to teach the material, and in a lot of the engineering classes, um, the way the course is laid out, there are some international versions of a book or some like just American versions, and I've oftentimes had to spend more and not been able to rent the cheaper version off Amazon because I've needed to get the American edition due to the units and problems not matching up. So again, it just depends on how many classes I'm taking and how the professor likes to teach the course. I've had some where they're like, do not buy the textbook, it's a waste of money. So I'll end up only spending, you know, 150 or $200 for one or two, maybe three of my classes. And then other semesters I've had to buy textbooks for five or six classes, which is never fun. And their next question is, how many hours a day do you spend doing homework and or studying, including the weekends? I honestly haven't sat down to total this up, but I'm in class anywhere from two to four or five hours, depending on the day. I've got more classes some days of the week than others, just because of the way my schedule laid out. And pretty much from when my classes start until, I wanna say like nine or 10 every night, I'm working on stuff with small breaks. Um, obviously during the week, I'm involved in stuff so there'll be two or three hours every night where i'm out but i would say in order to get everything done especially for engineering classes i'm spending at least five to six hours a day working on things again it changes week to week um, i do study a lot on the weekends every single day i haven't 
gone a single day without doing homework in school. Um, so it's a lot of work. My thermo professor likes to joke that Kimmy's weekend doesn't start until Saturday, unlike liberal arts majors whose weekend starts on Thursday. These are his words, not mine. Um, <clears throat> somebody also asked about, in this video, this was like over a year ago, I was taking mass and energy balances, like our intro chemi class. They asked if it was easy or hard. I thought it was medium. Um, it was a bit of a learning curve at first just because it's kind of your first rigorous engineering class or I guess your first real engineering class is a chemi at my university. And so you kind of have to get into that mindset of starting to work every day for multiple hours to make sure you really understand how to solve the problems. Um, I finished with an A. Um, I think I did well. I did fall on one of the tests, so I had to study really hard for the final to bring it back up, and I did well. So as long as you're doing all of your assigned problems, paying attention in lecture, and making sure you're getting enough time in, mass transfer is not bad. This one wasn't a question, but a really sweet comment. They said, I'm starting my second year very, very soon and I'm nervous with mass energy balance and heat transfer. Watching this motivates me and doesn't make me feel like I'm the only one. Thank you, love it. And I think that is so sweet and that's one of the reasons I love making these videos. Because people will comment like, hey, fellow chemical engineering student here, we're all in this struggle together. And that is super awesome to see because it can be super stressful, but making friends online and with your classmates definitely makes engineering a ton easier. Somebody asked me what year I am in. So I'm like a, second, third, not really sure year, um, I've done a co-op. And so it's kind of put me all over the place with my credit hours and my um, year classification at school. But right now I'm taking thermodynamics and fluids. So if that kind of gives you an idea of at your school what level I'm at. Those are the chemical engineering classes I'm taking right now, plus organic chemistry too. Someone else commented, Will a chemical engineering degree allow me to do process design and or go into the energy field? Yeah, of course. Like I mentioned earlier, there's pretty much a million things that a chemical engineer could do. And don't ever let um, a like more mechanical based job scare you away at my co-op. That's most of what I was doing. I actually worked with electrical equipment too. And basically this degree just shows that you know how to solve problems and think cr critically. And obviously the different specialties like chemical, electrical, and mechanical will be a big role in the job you play, but you can also learn a lot of those skills when you're actually on a job. Someone asked, can you please tell me if you need to be good at drawing for chemical engineering? Someone asked, please tell me if you need to be good at drawing for chemical engineering. I don't know. Um, we do draw a lot of boxes and arrows to show systems and like flows and unit op. Somebody asked how much math is involved and how is the schoolwork? I've kind of already answer answered this question, but I'll repeat it. You have to take all three calculuses as well as differential equations. And math is definitely important as I've learned in fluids. You actually have to remember all of that calculus, and it's been two years since I had calculus three. I took it my freshman year, um, and after co-oping, I totally fell out of practice with calculus. So I'm having to kind of remind myself and relearn that stuff, as well as le learning all of these new concepts and fluids, which has been difficult. So that's a really big piece of advice I can give you. Don't blow off these calculus um, and all these math classes. I like you can just study what you need to and get through. You will use this stuff later in your courses. Maybe not so much out on the job, uh, at least I didn't at my co-op, and I know it's depending on exactly what engineering specialty you go into, obviously plays a role into that, but do not blow it off in school because you'll use it in your next classes. Someone said, I never wake up at 6 a.m. Petroleum engineering here. Well, that semester I had an 8 a.m., so that's why I was up at 6.30. And another comment asking, is it hard? But I'm afraid I can't cope with all the subjects. Engineering is def definitely difficult. Um, it can feel a little bit lonely sometimes. A lot of my friends, bless their hearts, are not in engineering, and I don't think you can fully grasp how much work it is unless you are. They are all, they're all super smart people, but 
their majors will never require as much work as ours does and it can be tough sometimes because they're like hey guys we're going to do this fun thing and you're like okay I have three exams next week in these terrifying subjects and so if you have non-engineering friends it can definitely feel a little bit isolating which is why I recommend really getting to know all of your engineering classmates um, because when you guys are all on the same study schedule you can get together and work on stuff and not feel upset or offended when nobody can hang out because you have six hours of homework to do every day. So that's it for today. That's all of the questions I found when I went searching through my old videos. If you have any more chemical engineering questions, please comment them down below. I know that was kind of a narrow amount of topics, but like I said, I'm only a second or third year kind of level of student right now, so I don't have all of the experience in the world but I just wanted to answer the questions I got since I'm going through school right now. I can provide a lot of perspective about that. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye. You know...